Hello friends. Today I am in a very very dark place. A place that witness and is a testimony of the death of hundreds of thousands of Jewish people. We are now on the territory of the Treblinka concentration and death camp. What you see in front of you now are the stones that are a monument remembering the many Jewish lives that were killed here in the middle of this forest during World War II. The Treblinka concentration camp was one of the biggest and where the most Jewish people were killed in World War II. And as you can see, as I told you, we are in the middle of a forest. If you want to have some orientation, we are about 100 kilometers from Warsaw, uh, which is located in the eastern, uh, northern part of Poland. And this is one of the several camps that the Germans created in Poland to exterminate the Jewish population in Europe. Treblinka concentration camp was one of the most horrible places on earth during World War II because from the very beginning this camp was set up as a place of murder from the very beginning since it was created the design was to kill as many people as possible and the person that was sent to run this camp was a horrible person himself his name was Imfried Elber and he already had a very uh, big experience in killing people because he was already involved in killing thousands of people in Germany he was involved in a program of killing disabled people or mentally ill people in Germany so he was sent here to begin this process of eliminating the Jewish people so what you can see here are the stones remembering the many lives that were killed here and today I will go to many different parts of this camp actually uh, what you see here are just monuments because most of the camp almost all of it was disabled uh, as, uh, disassembled and destroyed by Germany because Germans were afraid as they knew they were losing the war they started destroying all the evidence and also this camp was eliminated so we don't have a lot of physical evidence of what actually happened here there are some things that I will show you in this video but most of it is gone of course we have photographs we have drawings of the prisoners uh, that were here and the drawings survived and showed us the horror of this place and we also have witness uh, of several people 
uh, that survived. Actually, today is a very important date because today is the 80th anniversary of the uprising of the Jewish people in this place. Uh, exactly 80 years ago, on the 2nd of August, there was a rebellion in, the, in this camp. And out of this rebellion, about 100 people were able to escape. And thanks to their survival, we were able to learn a lot of the atrocities that were committed by the German soldiers, the guards. Um, in this camp, particularly, there was also a lot of Ukrainian guards that were um, part of this horrible place. So, today I will be uh, participating in this ceremony, this commer uh, commemorating ceremony, remembering uh, the thousands of people that were killed here. Exactly, it is estimated that 800,000 Jewish people were killed here in Treblinka. And this is perhaps not a camp that is as known as the camp in Auschwitz, for example, uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau, which is also located in Poland. But this camp is very dramatic because uh, a lot of the Jews that were in the Warsaw Ghetto were transported to this particular camp. So here you can see a monument, a big monument, showing you this place, uh, showing you um, the memory of the Jewish people. And it's high, quite high, I think it's about 8 meters high. And on top of it, you have a menorah. And uh, it is made out of stones. Um, as you can see, they're in quite a raw state. Um, and it is uh, created in a way so that it remembers, it resembles a little bit the, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. So it's a big monument. As you can see, things are being set up here for the ceremony. Uh, and here is the, the other side of it. Unfortunately, the sun is uh, now blocking the view a little bit. But perhaps later on, I will be able to show you a little bit more of it. And there is like a big circle around this monument. So, on those stones, you have all the towns, all the villages in Poland that, uh, from where the Jewish people were transported to Treblinka. So many different cities that you can see here. And here is a particular stone dedicated uh, to remember uh, Janusz Korczak um, who was a very important teacher of children. He was a pedagogue, he was a, a, a scholar and his story is very tragic because he and his children uh, that were uh, put into Warsaw Ghetto, and they eventually uh, had to leave Warsaw. They entered a train in Warsaw that transported them here to this concentration camp. And as we know, they perished here with the rest of Jewish people. So he is a very famous person in Poland, a very good teacher, a very good scholar. Uh, he wrote many books 
until the end he was serving uh, the children he went with them and he did not abandon them as they traveled this horrible journey to Treblinka so now we're gonna go um, to a place where it all happened and I will try to tell you a little bit of the story how how it all went um, from the moment the trains came we'll go through the process of how people suffered and then we'll talk about their end where when their lives were cut off and brutally brutally ended so in a moment we'll begin you can see some people are coming here it is a special day today because it's the 80th anniversary so it's a round number it's a big number um, remembering this uprising because the Jewish people uh, although the Germans tried to in the beginning create an atmosphere of um, of peace they tried to camouflage the things that were happening here but eventually the Jewish people knew exactly that there is no escape from Treblinka but through the fires and through the gas chambers so I want to go in that direction over there uh, because that starts the beginning of the camp and there are some photos uh, showing you historically what happened here this is actually a new exhibition uh, something I haven't seen before so it's quite interesting to see it's showing you different aspects from this camp labor musicians that died here many different people from different backgrounds suffering this horrible reality of the concentration camp and you know as you can see we are like in the middle of a forest this camp was hidden it's very close to a place to a village called Treblinka this is from where this camp gets its name and uh, it's not very far from here but nevertheless it was in the in the in the middle of the forest and that was made for purpose so what you see here are also monuments stones big stones that show you uh, the rail tracks there is no more rail tracks here it was all disassembled and doesn't exist anymore but this monument presents you these tracks that uh, brought people to this concentration camp and this is the place that the Jewish people arrived the big stones you see here on this side are presenting the the gates of the camp where the line of the gates would be and the monument monuments are the trucks so here you see some of the pictures showing you people that had to come here um, 
uh, in uh, train carts that were actually designed for animals, for the transport of animals. They traveled many, many hours. Some of them in such horrible conditions that they even died on the way. And when they finally came to this place, they did not imagine the horrors that await them. So those are just a few pictures showing us some of the real people that traveled here to Treblinka and were killed. Some of the faces that died here. A horrible, horrible story. Horrible history. Horrible place. It's hard to speak even when you talk about this place. To think that a human being can do something such horrible to another person. And we're not talking about thousands. We're talking about hundreds of thousands. So this is the, the monument again showing you where the tracks would be located. This is where the train would come. People would get out on this ramp and immediately they were started to be sorted out. Uh, their belongings were taken from them. They were uh, all stripped from their clothes. Uh, some of them went straight to the death camp, to the place where they were killed. Others were sent to work, to very hard work. So here you can see a map showing you uh, the diagram of the camp. So this is the rain tracks. So we, we came from this way now. This would be the ramp where they would get out. And here would be the place where they would be sorted out, decided in a moment whether they would live or they would die. And those that were selected to go immediately to their death, they would travel through a tunnel that was also disguised in a forest by the trees. So they would go through this tunnel to another place, a different part of the camp where only death happened. They would cross this, uh, this tunnel which was called Der Schlauch um, and the Jewish people called it a um, uh, a tunnel to heaven um, because over here they were immediately brought to gas chambers uh, where they would be gassed and uh, the method of killing was horrible because uh, how would they do it? They would put people inside and they would put uh, pipes of tanks into this uh, room and people would be gassed by the gasoline uh, smoke that would come out of the pipes of the tanks. So a horrible, horrible death. Then people would be buried in those uh, big, big holes. They would be buried and they would rest there for a while. But this is something very tragic because 
this camp people were coming in so big amounts that this machine of killing was not sufficient enough and there was too many people coming and they were gassing those people as quickly as they could but they couldn't keep up so uh, they had to do with something with the bodies that were starting to decay and actually uh, at some point there was a German inspection of this camp and uh, they saw this chaos, this smell, this horrible smell of decaying bodies of people and of course uh, they were seeing that this machine is not sufficient enough there is a lot of chaos and an order and people are not killed sufficiently enough so they decided to finish their cooperation with Eberl, uh, the camp uh, commander and they uh, announced that another person will take over his name was Frank Stangler and after him a lot of things were improved um, in the efficiency of killing people so horrible horrible place if you can imagine here when people arrived and they didn't know where they are they were afraid they were tired after a very long journey and they arrived here and they saw hell they smelled hell they saw the fear and no hope This is a sign in Polish showing you the way to the gas chamber. So this, the stones on the ground show you this narrow way that was camouflaged. This is the place where people would be uh, selected, where their things would be taken from there. Uh, the stones, the big stones, now tell you the different countries that people traveled from to this concentration camp so you have france uh, you have um, the soviet uh, uh, the soviet union you have belgium yugoslavia czechoslovakia poland bulgaria uh, bulgaria uh, germany austria greece and macedonia those are the countries from which people traveled and some of those places are really really far away for example if you take places like uh, France it's more than a thousand kilometers to this place people were very very tired when they arrived and when they arrived this way shows you the way to their end the gas chambers so today I will show you a little bit of the ceremony uh, remembering the deaths of thousands of people there will be uh, the Jewish community here of Poland and there will be some officials from Poland and many other people so we still have some time until it will begin but more and more people will be coming to this place so we have some time to to walk a little bit around uh, there are some more photos over there that I want to show you This camp did not function for so long, if you think about it, it was about um, over a year. But during this short period of time, uh, so many people were killed. So it was really a huge death machine that functioned here. So here is a a historical picture uh, showing you 
uh, the mass, mass graves uh, that are digged up by those machines and the reasons uh, this is even more if you think that this story is already horrific uh, it gets even worse because when the Germans started losing the war they were afraid that the world will find out what was happening here so they started uh, eliminating all the evidence so they started digging up the bodies of the people they killed you know some of them were decaying in the process of decaying so they were digging uh, them up and they were starting to burn them on a huge huge uh, piles uh, that would create a huge smoke huge fire and this is another picture showing you this horrible reality this picture was made by uh, Kurt Franz uh, and he was the uh, the second in command in Treblinka and it's coming from an album called the uh, hellish times uh, and uh, what you see here um, are some of the um, buildings in the camp and you see this big uh, truck starting to dig out the bodies there is not a lot of uh, pictures of this place obviously and the, um, the prisoners could not make pictures but the Germans did make some pictures and some of them were not destroyed so we have this uh, this is another place showing you the the digging of the mass graves and holes were made to dig people uh, inside uh, those holes And again on those on those stones you have the names of the different cities in Poland because the majority of the Jewish people that died here uh, were Jewish people that lived in Poland and uh, they uh, uh, they died here and that's why this camp is uh, probably the most tragic for the Polish population because the majority of Polish Jews uh, were killed here the majority of the people that were killed uh, were from Poland so this is another horrific story of this place because it shows you a picture of a zoo that was created in this place yes the guards the soldiers they created a zoo for themselves here so they can have some peaceful time next to the place where people were burned alive where the where bodies were dig up from the ground and burned they had a zoo and this was a place this zoo this uh, this houses you can see here or a place for the German SS soldiers to rest to relax can you imagine this it's so horrible two different realities this camp was basically three different parts there was the part which we are now in which is the death place where the people were killed there was the place where uh, the people were stripped of their clothes of their things where the trains arrived and there was another place where people the guards of this camp would rest and live three different realities 
this is another picture showing you uh, the reality after the uprising that's what the the sign over here says uh, the uprising as you can see happened in august 1943 and this is a renovation of the armory after that uprising as i told you about 100 people uh, survived and escaped 200 people escaped but only 100 survived the escape so a uh, very small amount of people so already we can see that there is a chore over there preparing for the ceremony of commemoration So the ceremony should start in about half an hour so there will be more and more people coming here ceremony and uh, this is basically the place there is not a lot of it left I want to show you one more place that is a witness of this horrible uh, story that I mentioned before And this is the place where people were burned. Their bodies that were dig up from the ground were burning here on an installation that was created where those human bodies were burned alive. This is a monument showing you where it happened. So today I will 
be participating in this ceremony. Uh, so if you want to be part of it, uh, please stay with me. I will perhaps go over there to those boards over there because that's an it's another place that may have something new over here. Maybe I'll wait until those people will pass by because I don't want to talk and and disturb them. So once again, this is showing you this place, this crematoria, if you want to say, of Treblinka, the monument where the gas chambers would be located. In that direction, you had the trucks, and this is where the trains would come with the transports, and this was all camouflaged. This whole open space, as you can see here. It was all camouflaged by trees and fences. So people that did not have access to this place couldn't see what was happening here. But of course, after a while, they realized, they understood because they even smelled death that was happening over here so this is showing you some kind of archaeology that was happening here remains of the gas chambers so everything was destroyed by the Germans Uh, when the Germans left, they basically uh, left only one house that remained here. And a Ukrainian family was left here to live in this house. But when the Germans were retreating and the Russians were starting to come, uh, the Soviet uh, Union when the soldiers of the Soviet Union were starting to come here, this house was also burned. This Ukrainian family put the house on fire and they escaped themselves. So, really nothing left, became left of this place. Just the silence of the forest. That remembers the screams of so many people. So we are now on the again on the edge of the camp. Uh, again, you can see uh, the big stones which symbolize where the fence would be. So on this side, you have the territory of the camp and on the other side is the outside. And actually, uh, you can see here that trees are planted and this is the so-called Korchak forest. I told you about Janusz Korczak. Janusz Korczak was a famous a teacher, a pedagogue, um, influencer, um, children rights um, mm, defender mm, and he and his uh, children that were under his um, uh, guidance, uh, the many orphans uh, of the uh, children's school that he was running ended up in this camp so uh, his name is Janusz Korczak uh, his actual name was Henrik Goldschmidt 
he was a Jewish man uh, that stayed with the children till the very end. He went on the train with them. You can imagine that he was trying to comfort, um, comfort them in this horrible situation. And this is where they were transported. The children and the Anush Korczak. And this is the, the forest. Perhaps through trees like these, some of the Jewish people were escaping this camp. Today is the 80th anniversary of the uprising. And that happened exactly on this day, on the 2nd of August, 80 years ago, there was an uprising and 200 Jewish people were able to escape. And perhaps they were trying to escape through, a, through trees like that. 100 of them survived. The rest died, either captured or because of exhaustion, injuries, they did not survive. And many, many people that were not able to escape were killed in the concentration camp, in the death camp of Dribbling. Today it's a peaceful place, but a place that remembers the blood of so many people that were murdered here. This is a sanctuary, you can say, because the innocence of this pe of these people, many children that were killed here, made this place like a sanctuary. They were brought to this place like sheep to slaughter. people that are joining us and we will begin very shortly commemoration to take your seats szanowni państwo już wkrótce rozpocznie się nasze upamiętnienie Dlatego też uprzejmie proszę wszystkich Państwa o zajmowanie miejsc. Thank you so much. The following passage was written in April 1944 by Oskar Straczynski, a Jew from Roch, who had rebelled and escaped from Treblinka in August 1943, and eventually he joined a group of Jewish partisans. Straczynski wrote in anguish to his dead wife, Anka, a letter she will never read. More than 18 months have passed since we were most brutally parted. I wish that my bundle of memories soaked in blood and tears will serve as a perpetual tombstone for you, my dearest, for our children, parents, brothers, sisters, and the millions of men, women, and children who were murdered together with you. We gather here in Treblinka today, a place that is simultaneously sacred 
uncursed. 80 years after the supremely courageous and impossible rebellion of hundreds of Jewish prisoners, doomed to death, yet destined for eternal glory. They rebelled against the German Nazi murderers and their collaborators. Eight decades later, the silence of the nearby forest surrounds us and deceives us. Symbolic memorial stones are the only visual reference to the horrible crimes that cruelly extinguished the lives of hundreds of thousands of Jews, most to not all from Poland, others from distant countries as far away as the Balkans. Here the Nazis were frighteningly successful, not only in perpetrating their unprecedented crimes of diabolic anti-Semitic hatred, but also they were successful almost in concealing those crimes afterwards. If it were not for survivor testimonies and decades of painstaking research and documentation of the atrocities committed here, we may be tempted to imagine that the vast scale of the mass murders here has been somehow exaggerated, or that perhaps it was similar to the fate of other persecuted peoples and groups at that time. But of course, the fate of the Jews during the Shoah has not been exaggerated. It was tragically different. And it was as horrible as the witnesses, the photos, and the documents attest to. We gather today at Treblinka, as at every event of authentic and accurate Shoah remembrance, to affirm our determination to forever learn and tell the stories of the victims. Vehigadeta Levincha, and will tell to your son, commands us the Bible. And we do that here in Teblinka, leaving no room for misunderstanding or distortion. They, the victims and the survivors, deserve no less. Others who merit our remembrance and our eternal admiration are the non-Jews, relatively few throughout Europe, including in Poland, who bravely dare to endanger themselves in attempts to save Jews from death during the Shoah. For precisely that purpose, the State of Israel, through Yad Vashem, and on behalf of the Jewish people, established the Righteous Among the Nations program, Hasidei Umot HaOlam, which has already recognized over 28,000 such persons, over 7,000 of them Polish citizens. Four of those Polish citizens were the Ragushevsky family. On my way here to Treblinka from the airport, I passed a village named Wachov. That's the village of the Ragushevsky family. Knowingly, they risked their lives. They hid Ostar Savchinsky, the man that wrote that letter to his dead wife. They hid him for several weeks after he had escaped from Treblinka during the August 2nd revolt. <coughs> and he managed to make his way to Wachow. We salute the Ragushevskis, not only for bravely saving Oscar's life, but also for saving thereby for posterity his invaluable detailed testimony about what happened in this terrible place. Sadly, immense documentation from the war and afterwards informs us that such cases of compassion and courage on behalf of Jews by their non-Jewish neighbors were rare throughout occupied Europe. Poland was no exception. 
A disservice to the righteous and their wonderful legacy is done when cases of betrayal of Jews during the Holocaust and their wartime and post-war oppression by locals are forgotten, minimized, or even deliberately deleted from the annals of history. Nor do we forget or minimize the suffering of the Polish people during World War II, subjugated, oppressed by the German occupiers. Szanowni Państwo, dear friends, it's difficult to speak, but we must speak. Treblinka was created by Nazi Germany as a kind of black hole, a death camp where all Jews were destined to perish and to be forgotten. But today we stand here, we remember the Treblinka uprising. We remember the heroes who fought against the absolute evil, fought with bare hands for freedom and life. <coughs> Jews, ladies and gentlemen, fought wherever they could. Over a million and a half Jewish soldiers fought within Allied armies, including the Polish army. A quarter of a million were killed in battles. The Nazis and their collaborators sought to erase the traces of their crimes, crimes that had no cause and have no forgiveness. Adonai <laughs> Kivete Adonai, Kiveta Nafshi, Lidvara Hachati, Nafshi, Ladanai, Mishomrim Laboker, Shomrim Laboker, Yaha Yisrael Danai, Ki Im Adonai Chesed, by Bem of the Dod, we have that Yisrael, we call Avonotav, El Malera Hamim. Shochein Bamromim, Hamtsei Menoch and Ochonatak at Karfea Shina, Memalot Kidoshim Tohorim, Kazorakim Masirim, Et Nishmot Acheno Achiateno, Anashim Nashim Vitav, Shinehergo, Vishineshreto, Vishinisro Fochaim. Akidush Hashem Po the Treblinka Vigaretem Ruchatam Bavu Shekolano Miss Palimars Karat Nishmothehem Lachena Balara Hamim Yastirem Seter and Afab the Yolamim Vietz Robert Rahim Nishmatam Adonaiunachalatam Parach, Vishtabach, Vitpaar, Vitromam, Vitnase, Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalar, Shmedu Kucha, Barejo, Lie Lam in Koberhata, Vishirata, Tushpahata, Venechamata, Damiran, Vialma, Vim Romain, Yehe, Shlamaraba, Min Shemaya, Chayam Alino, Vako Israel, Vim Romain, Ose Shalom in Romav, Uyase Shalom. Aleinu Valko Yisrael, 
Imamo, amen. Moširić. Vječno odpočene, kračim dać panje, a światlošć vjeku ista, nekaj im sveći na vjeki vjeku, nekaj odpočevajo v pokoju vječne. So guys, ceremony is still going on, there are prayers now happening. So the prayer by Chief Rabbi of Poland and now the Catholic priests are praying also you see that there's much more people now here uh, I uh, left because I want to show you one more thing that I did not put enough attention to by the way here you can see a group from Israel And uh, we are here visiting this place. What uh, also is important, what was said, is that today is the 15th of Av. Uh, there is the 9th of Av, which marks the date of the destruction of the Jewish temple. Both the first and the second temple were destroyed on the same day, the 9th of Av. Av is a, a, is a month in the Hebrew calendar. And today is the 15th of Av, so the 15th of the month of Av, which is also a very important fasting day. And, as you, um, and of course, remembering that today we commemorate the uh, 80th uh, anniversary of the uh, uprising in Treblinka this is quite significant so I wanted to come back here because you can see here we were here in the beginning of the video those are actually uh, works um, done sculptures uh, done by Samuel Willenberg and he was one of the people that escaped uh, Treblinka he escaped and he created a lot of those sculptures uh, all of them that you can see here it's an exhibition now uh, happening in this museum and I did not realize this uh, until later that actually this is uh, this is his work and uh, so those sculptures are quite unique uh, here for example you can see uh, the Jewish people going out from the train uh, from the cart train and they are uh, presented as a mass as a mass that's not fully formed and this kind of symbolizes how the Germans uh, interpreted the Jewish people as this mass of people, uh, of, of objects that actually did not matter. That's all who they were to them. Uh, here you can see a sculpture of a person uh, who is dying, lying, probably could be one of the people that came from the trains. Uh, I did not say this, but sometimes the trains took several days to actually come to Treblinka and people were dying on those trains already. So many of those uh, sculptures show the horrible life that happened here at Treblinka, the horrible scenes. And Willenberg, uh, who escaped uh, Treblinka, who was part of this uprising, uh, he committed his life to remembering, to somehow commemorating those that survived. And uh, actually today on the ceremony, uh, there was a member of the Willenberg family and the lady, uh, Ada was her, her name, she uh, donated all those sculptures that were created by Samuel Willenberg to the uh, Treblinka uh, Museum. So another sculpture showing you again those, this mass, this mass that's not formed of people, uh, but it's not fully 
uh, you don't see the full um, shape of the people. Uh, again, they are presented as this formless mass that, that doesn't matter, that didn't matter to the Germans. And you can see the suitcases uh, that were uh, on top of them. So here is another one showing you an elderly person uh, uh, just sitting there already uh, very thin and exhausted a woman that's again showing pain so now uh, we'll go further uh, because there is I hear singing has started So this is kind of an interesting picture. You see uh, where the tracks would be, you see the ramp. And now you can see Israelis standing on the ramp where the Jewish people would come and where they would arrive. They would be stripped of their things, of their clothes, selected and sent to the death. And now you have living people from Israel standing here as a testimony that this evil did not win. So in the background, the chore is singing now. And you see a person discussing this. Again, a view on the on the monument, on the ceremony, the people that are gathered here. Soon, you will hear the singing of the chore. Szanowni Państwo,
Okay guys, so uh, the ceremony has ended and basically everybody is leaving now. Um, there is one more thing I want to show you uh, before I end this video. And this is like, a, it says museum, but it's not a proper museum. And they have a museum and plans to build here. And actually it would be a very good thing if an actual museum would be created here. So uh, there are plans to build one. And inside this building, uh, there are more uh, things Ex uh, expositions showing you and uh, the things that happened here in the museum so we'll enter and you will be able to see some of them so here you can see some more photos uh, from the Treblinka concentration camp Here you have an actual model showing you how the museum was structured. So this section over here you see huge holes where people were buried. This is the section of the museum of the camp uh, that was specifically designed to kill people. So you have one building over there, which um, where the gas chambers were located. Then when people were killed in this building, they were buried in big holes that were dig up. And afterwards, when it was evident that the Germans were losing, they were trying to get rid of the evidence. So they were burning the dicked up bodies. And this, this is like this uh, place where they would burn the prisoners. So here you see some piles of things. Uh, this represents the things that are stripped from the Jewish people. And This is the, the other part of the camp where uh, the soldiers, the guards, were living in. So you have an actual museum, I mean, you have an actual zoo over here. This would be the living quarters of the guards. And here are some fields where things were grown for the soldiers, for the uh, guards of this camp. So, this is a model, once again, of this place. So, here again, you have some drawings. And this is a drawing actually made by Samuel Willenberg. Uh, Samuel Willenberg, you can see his, his picture here as he looked as a prisoner and also already as a grown man. And this shows you the, the plan of the camp. So, once again, you would see the trains coming here in this place. This is where people were sorted out and after that uh, they went through this tunnel. This tunnel over here that led them to the gas chambers. So you can say that the camp was divided into three parts. You had the place where things, people arrived and the things were sorted out. You had the place where the guards lived and also the 
place where people were just uh, man murdered. So those things over here are the holes where people were buried. And this is the house presenting the gas chamber. So this drawing is, was, was drawn by an actual prisoner of this place who was able to escape. His name was Samuel Willenberg. And here again, you can see another uh, picture, another drawing showing you um, the camp. So you have the train coming in, people getting out, they were sorted, and here they were killed. This is another uh, place uh, which is shown through this uh, drawing. It's called the Lazaret. And actually here, uh, people that were sick, that were uh, having some health problems were brought in and you can see that there was a red cross over here. Uh, but actually people were brought into this place and they were killed. So it was not a hospital but a place where people were actually executed. So it was a, a facade of, uh, of the camp that actually people are being killed here. So those are just a few items that survived, that remain, that tell us about this horrible story, this horrible experience some of the items that we have at our left because most of the stuff was destroyed on purpose to hide the truth to hide the evidence so as you can see it's not a big museum it's not a big house there's more things Over here, you can see some of the matsebas broken. 